Well guys, this is Ona Beach. This is the place where we're gonna have our surf fishing tournament on Saturday, September 2nd. So I'm gonna fish this spot and see uh, how well I do. I was here uh, yesterday, I did pretty good. And so rarely do I have like a back-to-back -back good day, but we'll see. So when you come here, you know, you park in the parking lot, you come out, Last time I made a so I made a right turn that wasn't very good. Um, I would suggest you make a left turn once you get out of the park. You want to come fish by the cliff. That is usually a productive area. So, I mean, this place isn't great, but it's been kind of consistent. And if you don't get any bites. Let's say you've been in an area, you made about six, seven casts, and you've been there for about five to seven minutes. You probably want to move around. You want to move around all along this beach. You see the rocks behind me? And over there, that way is still rock. So anywhere along this beach, it's going to be pretty decent. The key is to move around. Don't stay in one spot all the time, okay? Holy cow! Wow! He took us so close again! See that? Holy snap! Look at him in the end. He's fighting in the water. Jeez! I was reeling in slowly. Really, really slowly. He just hammered it. Very close to me, about 30 feet away. It feels like a really good one. Just the way he hit. That was a massive, massive hit. Whoa, he's a big one. Okay guys, first fish. That's what I mean, you gotta move around. I, my first two spot, I didn't get anything, so I moved. Now this guy, see that? That's a big old female. I'm gonna keep her. Holy snap. Well, maybe I won't keep her. Maybe I won't keep her. We'll let her go, actually. Oh, look at that. Okay, we're gonna let her go, though. She's for the baby. There she goes. Okay guys, let me show you the bottom rig I use for surf fishing on the Oregon coast. Um, this is it right here. This is a, it's a high-low rig. Um, now, this is my main line here. It braid line and I have a very long leader. Um, now, the rod I use is a 10 foot and my leader starts right there. As you can see, that's the first eye. So for 10 foot, it's a pretty long leader. And that's how I like it because I've noticed I catch a lot more fish rigging this way. Uh, now right there, that is a double uni um, tied um, joining my main and my leader. So if you're using mono as your main line, you don't need to tie that double uni, okay? And then I have two dropper loops, number two hook, and about one foot apart, I got my other dropper loop, also a number two hook. And about a foot and a half down, I have my two ounce uh, disc sinker. I like these disc sinker because they don't roll much at all. And uh, they cast pretty far. So that's it guys. So if you figure it out, this is just a three foot bot for a, a de demonstration, sorry. Um, imagine my 10 foot, uh, as you can see, that leader is gonna be pretty long, okay? So let's go out there and catch fish. Oh, fish on, guys. 
fish on. There we go. There we go, second fish. Move around, that's the key. The waves are freaking huge today. Five to seven foot. It's massive. About 10 to 12 seconds apart. But I'm just being careful. I go in, I cast, and then I back up. It's like another nice one. Don't want to horse her in. Oh, that might be a good one. That might be a good one. She does not want to come in. Wow. It might be a foul hook too. Sometimes if they're a foul hook, it creates a lot of drag and you think it's a big fish when it's actually, it's a pretty small one. Oh no, he's not bad. Oh, he's not bad. Another big one. All right, there it is guys, another female. So we are going to let her go right there. All right, right there guys. Let her go. There she goes. Okay, so let's talk about bait. Um, as you may or may not know, gulp sandworms are the only ones I use. Um, these are very, very effective. They last a very long time. And when I say they last a very long time is I dry them out first. Uh, when it's sunny like this, you know, it's about 80 degrees outside. Um, it's kind of windy. I leave it out for about four hours, um, maybe five hours. And they dry up pretty good. And the reason I dry them out is, so you can see there, um, they become rubbery and they stay on the hook a very long time. They don't come off very easily. You can use two pretty much, I use two pretty much a whole session. Sometime I switch it out. So I go through the most, you know, four per session, like a four or five hour session. So that's why I dry them out um, because they last longer. They're more durable uh, when the red tails, because they, they tend to nip at the, uh, at the tail and it, they, they pull it off. If you don't dry them out, they, t they come off pretty easily because they're soft. But when you dry them out, they become very rubbery. And so that's why you will save a lot of money in the long run if you dry them out, okay? Okay, so how do you bait them on? Well, it's pretty easy. You take the hook and a sandworm and you go right through the center, okay? So just like that, guide it through, right through the center, push it through, Okay, that's it right there. That's all you need, okay? So again, lay out some paper towels, pour these out into the paper towel, let it dry out in the uh, um, outside for about three to four hours, depending on the uh, weather condition. If it's really windy outside, uh, you might wanna wash it closely because you can over dry these and then they'll be kinda hard um, to put on the hook. Now, for the packet, when you dry them out, dump out all the juice, you know, rinse it out and then get some paper towels and wipe the inside, make sure it's dry. When you're done drying the sandworms, you put them back into the packet, okay? So you don't want to pour juice back into there because that would defeat the purpose of drying them out, okay? fish on fish on again holy cow back to back guys doesn't feel very big though let's bring her in or him and see what it is it is high tide is approaching so the bite has been uh, pretty good so far start off a little slow but I got this one back to back. 
Ah, uh, he is water and skiing right in so that means it's a pretty small one all right buddy what are you is that a silver yeah that's a silver a small silver these guys are also very good eating but they are pretty small all right these fish are pretty. It's beautiful looking. All right, go buddy, go. Wrong way. Ah, there he goes. He got it, he made it. Oh, fish on, holy cow. Seriously. I did back to back. This is my third fish back to back, guys. Right as I cast it, once it landed, I kept my line slacked a little bit. And when I tightened up my slack, that fish was on. Well, guys, I'm hoping tournament day is gonna be this good. But, you know, that's you know, Mother Nature, we can't predict it. It might be good, might be bad. I hope, holy cow, wow. I hope a lot of people catch fish that day. So far, my tournament hasn't really been spectacular. The last one we had was just terrible. I mean, I think people, had a good time just getting out there, meeting other people, but in terms of catching fish, no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's a big one. Holy cow, that's a nice one. Holy snap. That is a huge one. Oh man. Look at the size of her. She's huge, there's my hand, see that? Wow, that's a big female. All right, we're gonna let her go. Wow, man. Look at that, Jesus. That's a big red tail, guys. All right, we're gonna let her go. Oh, there she goes, holy cow. That's a massive one. She had a lot of babies in it, so. Definitely not a good idea to keep them. If you want food, you know, you need dinner, yeah, that's fine. Fish on, fish on. Holy cow. There we go, guys. Just like that. Pretty easy. This is the hardest fighting one yet. Oh, man. Come on, buddy. Go up sandworms. Number two hook. Two ounce weight. That's a ticket. I'm using a 10 foot rod, 10 foot salmon rod. It is rated up to two, two ounce. It's very, very light, very, very sensitive, and man, it casts a country mile. I like it so much, I have three of these as backup. That's how much I like them. They're just awesome rod. This is the Cabela's Torna Trail. I am eight, 10 foot, heavy action, two piece. 
Oh man, that's a big fish. Well, that's a big fish. Wow. Holy snap. Okay guys, so that last fish I decided to keep for dinner. Um, even though she was a female and had babies in there. Um, you know, I, I want to keep some for dinner for myself, okay? Um, I only took what I, I needed, which is, you know, one fish is good enough. It, 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 it'll feed me fine. So um, let's talk about rod and reel. So what's the best rod and reel combo to use for uh, surf fishing? My advice is to use whatever you feel comfortable using. Um, for me personally, I have this 10 foot salmon rod, which is um, a very, very awesome rod for surf fishing here on the Oregon coast. The 10 foot is going to let you cast very, very far. And the other thing I like about this rod is it's very, very light. It's very sensitive. Okay. Paired with uh, my Shimano Stratic size 4000, it's a pretty nice combo. So I suggest you use a rod that you feel comfortable using. It doesn't have to be a 10 footer. Um, I've used my, my bass rod actually, and uh, this is a 6 foot 6. I've used this um, while fishing in Barview and Garibaldi did very well with it. It didn't let me cast very far, so that's why I switched to the uh, 10 foot rod. If you have like a seven footer, or eight footer, eight and a half footer, nine foot, those will be fine. Okay. The most important thing is you, f you use a rod that you feel comfortable using, you know, the one you have confidence in. So that's gonna help you catch more fish. Well, that's it guys. Um, I hope this video has helped you a little bit to prepare for the surf fishing tournament on Saturday, September 2nd. And hopefully the weather is going to cooperate, the swell is going to be low, the wind's going to be low, and the, the fish going to bite like crazy. Okay? So cross our fingers. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Have fun fishing. Tight lines.